Hello and welcome to today's Daily Bible reading. I hope you're enjoying these. I know we've gone through a lot of tedious stuff through the Pentateuch where it's about the offerings and sacrifices and things like that. But now we're getting into the history component of the Old Testament. So the Old Testament is divided into law, history, the prophets, and the prophets, well actually sorry, I should say the poetry books, and then the prophets. And so right now we're in the history section and we're going to be looking at one of the guys when I was, uh, when I was growing up, this guy fascinated me. So let's pray and we'll have a look at him. Father, open our eyes, open our ears, help us to hear and to see and to even feel your word as we read it now. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, this is Judges chapter 13. And the people of Israel again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord gave them into the hand of the Philistines for forty years. And there was a certain man of Zorah, of the tribe of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and had no children. And the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Behold, you are barren and have not born children, but you shall conceive and bear a son. Therefore be careful, and drink no wine or strong drink, and eat nothing unclean. For behold, you shall conceive and bear a son, no razor shall come upon his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb, and he shall begin to save Israel from the hand of the Philistines. Then the woman came and told her husband, A man of God came to me, and his appearance was like the appearance of the angel of God. Very awesome! I did not ask him where he was from, and he did not tell me his name. But he said to me, Behold, you shall conceive and bear a son. So then drink no wine or strong drink, and eat nothing unclean, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Then Manoah prayed to the Lord and said, O oh Lord, please let the man of God whom you sent come again to us and teach us what we are to do with the child who will be born. And God listened to the voice of Manoah, and the angel of God came again to the woman as she sat in the field. But Manoah, her husband, was not with her. So the woman ran quickly and told her husband, Behold, the man who came to me the other day has appeared to me. And Manoah arose and went after his wife and came to the man and said to him, Are you the man who spoke to this woman? And he said, I am. And Manoah said, Now, when your words come true, what is to be the child's manner of life, and what is his mission? And the angel of the Lord said to Manoah, Of all that I said to the woman, let her be careful. She may not eat of anything that comes from the vine, neither let her drink wine or strong drink, or eat any unclean thing. All that I commanded her, let her observe. Manoah said to the angel of the Lord, Please let us detain you and prepare a young goat for you. And the angel of the Lord said to Manoah, If you detain me, I will not eat of your food. But if you prepare a burnt offering, then offer it to the Lord. For Manoah did not know that he was the angel of the Lord. And Manoah said to the angel of the Lord, What is your name, so that when your words come true, we may honor you? And the angel of the Lord said to him, Why do you ask my name, seeing it is wonderful? So Manoah took the young goat with the grain offering and offered it on the rock to the Lord, to the one who works wonders. And Manoah and his wife were watching. And when the flame went up toward heaven from the altar, the angel of the Lord went up in the flame of the altar. Now Manoah and his wife were watching, and they fell on their faces to the ground. The angel of the Lord appeared no more to Manoah and to his wife. Then Manoah knew that he was the angel of the Lord. And Manoah said to his wife, We shall surely die, for we have seen God. But his wife said to him, If the Lord had meant to kill us, he would not have accepted a burnt offering and a grain offering at our hands, or shown us all these things, or now announced to us such things as these. And the woman bore a son and called his name Samson. And the young man grew, and the Lord blessed him. And the Spirit of the Lord began to stir him at Manahedan between Zorah and Eshtol. Well, maybe you've had a fascination with this character as well. This is the Samson character and the whole story 
It is absolutely amazing. And I think when I was growing up, I, I may have seen movies and things, and this Samson character had bulging muscles and all the rest of it. But the biblical picture is that they did not know where his strength came from. He did not look like a strong man, as we'll see in a moment. Uh, we also have seen uh, that this, na this uh, person, Samson, was to be a Nazarite, not a Nazarene, there's a difference, Nazarite, one dedicated to the Lord. And to do that dedication, you had to not be under any influence of alcohol. And I guess in those days, even things like grapes or raisins could have in some way been fermented and perhaps clouded the, the, the mental capacity of those who had made a vow of dedication to the Lord. So Samson and even his mother were not to participate in anything that, that came close to uh, dead, unclean or alcohol. All right, let's continue. This is Judges chapter 14. Samson went down to Timnah, and at Timnah he saw one of the daughters of the Philistines. Then he came up and told his father and mother, I saw one of the daughters of the Philistines at Timnah. Now get her for me as my wife. But his father and mother said to him, Is there not a woman among the daughters of your relatives or among all our people that you must go to take a wife from the uncircumcised Philistines? But Samson said to his father, Get her for me, for she is right in my eyes. His father and mother did not know that it was from the Lord, for he was seeking an opportunity against the Philistines. At that time the Philistines ruled over Israel. Then Samson went down with his father and mother to Timnah, and they came to the vineyards of Timnah, and behold, a young lion came toward him, roaring. Then the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon him, and although he had nothing in his hand, he tore the lion in pieces as one tears a young goat, but he did not tell his father or his mother what he had done. Then he went down and talked with the woman, and she was right in Samson's eyes. After some days he returned to take her, and he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion, and behold, there was a swarm of bees in the body of the lion and honey. He scraped it out into his hands and went on, eating as he went. And he came to his father and mother and gave some to them, and they ate. But he did not tell them that he had scraped the honey from the carcass of the lion. His father went down to the woman, and Samson prepared a feast there, for so the young men used to do. As soon as the people saw him, they brought thirty companions to be with him. And Samson said to them, Let me now put a riddle to you. If you can tell me what it is, within the seven days of the feast, and find it out, then I will give you thirty linen garments and thirty changes of clothes. But if you cannot tell me what it is, then you shall give me thirty linen garments and thirty changes of clothes. And they said to him, Put your riddle, that we may hear it. And he said to them, Out of the eater came something to eat, out of the strong came something sweet. Pretty cool how that rhymes in English. I'm not sure it rhymes in other languages, though. And in three days, they could not solve the riddle. On the fourth day, they said to Samson's wife, Entice your husband to tell us what the riddle is, lest we burn you and your father's house with fire. Have you invited us here to impoverish us? And Samson's wife wept over him and said, You only hate me. You do not love me. You have put a riddle to my people, and you have not told me what it is. And he said to her, Behold, I have not told my father nor my mother, and shall I tell you? She wept before him the seven days that their feast lasted, and on the seventh day he told her, because she pressed him hard. Then she told the riddle to her people, and the men of the city said to him on the seventh day before the sun went down, What is sweeter than honey? What is stronger than a lion? And he said to them, if you had not ploughed with my heifer, you would not have found out my riddle. And the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon him, and he went down to Ashkelon and struck down thirty men of the town, and took their spoil and gave the garments to those who had told the riddle. In hot anger he went back to his father's house. And Samson's wife was given to his companion, who had been his best man. Okay, so we see somehow in God's plan, Samson was able to use this moment as a moment to bring a victory against the Philistine oppressors of his town, of his, of his people, of, of their country. And we're going to see a pattern 
just as Israel, whenever Israel came into blessing and prosperity, they turned their back on God. And we're going to see with Samson that he was gifted, amazingly gifted. He was blessed beyond pretty much anyone before him with, with supernatural strength. And we're going to see that he also turns his back on God. It is so sad. And there's lessons in that for us. Now, as we come to Matthew 28, I want to mention to you a project which uh, Dallas Jenkins, an American film director and producer, has undertaken. He's crowdfunded it. And I'll tell you about it in a moment after we've read this chapter because I want to encourage you to get the app of uh, this project. Anyway, so let's have a look now. Matthew chapter 28. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. And he said, Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. Then you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. While they were going, behold, some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priests all that had taken place. And when they had assembled with the elders and taken counsel, they gave a sufficient sum of money to the soldiers and said, Tell people his disciples came by night and stole him away while we were asleep. And if this comes to the governor's ears, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So they took the money and did as they were directed. And this story has been spread among the Jews to this day. Now that is the craziest, craziest explanation. I mean, imagine this. Um, tell people that when you were asleep, uh, his disciples came and stole the body. Question, you were asleep. How do you know what happened? It's crazy. Just, I don't think they thought that one through very well. Apart from the fact that just as the earthquake happened, the tomb was rolled open, and when, by the time the women get there, Jesus is not there where he was laying. And the guards then fled. So you've got, you've got a little bit going on here. So now we come to the final section of Matthew's Gospel. Now, the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when he saw them, they worshipped him. But some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Now one of the things we're going to see with Matthew, Mark and Luke, which are referred to as the synoptic gospel, synoptic, they are looking at it the same way is that they're writing to different audiences and they are selective in what they write. So, for example, we'll see that Matthew describes, often describes two blind men, two angels, two demoniacs and so on. Whereas the other gospel writers, will, writing of the same event, will describe one angel, one demoniac and so on. And just because they describe one doesn't mean there, was, there wasn't two. That's, that's just worth comparing the gospel accounts there. This account leaves out some of the transaction that, that we see happening between Christ and disciples uh, that, that's recorded in the other Gospels. Now, just because Matthew doesn't refer to it doesn't mean it didn't happen. He's being selective in what he wrote under the direction of the Holy Spirit. And so we see that the women were the first witnesses. We see the other Gospel writers re referring to the fact that, that the angel appears to them. They, they then 
see Christ and they encounter Christ. And then Christ appears to the disciples who are presumably in Jerusalem. And then he tells them, I'll meet you in Galilee. And so from there, we see that Christ was present with them for, for quite a few days. And then he ascends um, up, up here in this region of Galilee. What Matthew doesn't tell us and what the Apostle Paul does tell us is that when this happened, there were around 500 present. So this is, it's, it's extraordinary, absolutely extraordinary. So I want to, just before I close in prayer, I want to tell you about this project that I really want to encourage you to get the app. You'll find it in the App Store. I presume you'll find it in the Google Play Store as well. And it's called The Chosen. The Chosen. Season one has been done. Dallas Jenkins has done an absolutely outstanding job in producing, directing this project called The Chosen. It's a serialized uh, account of the life of Christ. It is outstanding, absolutely outstanding. Of all the Jesus films I've seen, The Passion up until seeing The Chosen, The Passion was, was, was easily the best depiction of Christ I'd seen. But now, watching The Chosen, I think they've pipped The, the Passion, which is no mean feat. And this depiction of Christ, serialized, was crowd funded. It's not a Netflix, it's not a Hollywood thing, but it is absolutely A-grade actors. Brilliant. The character, uh, John Ruel, I think, uh, who plays Jesus, is just extraordinary. Absolutely extraordinary. Utterly believable. You'll find that what they have done is they have used their imagination and, and asked questions like, what did Jesus do in between? Uh, the, the age of 12 and the age of 30 when he began his ministry. And they conjecture. And it's reasonable. It's, it's quite reasonable conjecture. And then they explore questions like, what was Matthew like? What was Simon like? And they show some of the background based on some of the little bits of information that we get in the Gospels. Now, they could be wrong, but even still, it's a wonderfully told story. And the serialization of it is just superb. They're, they're looking to crowdfund to raise the funds to do season two. I've put my money where my mouth is, and I hope you might too. Have a look at it in the App Store, the Apple App Store, and probably the Google Play Store for The Chosen by Dallas Jenkins. All right, now I want to close in prayer. Father, we thank you for your word. We see the pattern of Israel mm, uh, falling from blessing and security into sin yet again. And we'll see it even in Samson. And yet, Lord, we look in contrast to the one who remained faithful, Jesus, who calls us to remain faithful for all our days. It's not how we run the race, it's how we run the race and finish the race that counts. Help us today to run our race well, to be faithful to you, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you. If you haven't liked this, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. And I'll see you tomorrow for our next Daily Bible Reading.